Well, good morning to you on this New Year's Eve day. It's still New Year's Eve if it's during the day, right? <laughs> December 31st, this last day of 2023. I'm excited that you chose to start off your morning with Jesus and with fellow believers on this last day of the year. I'm excited that we're here to worship together this morning and kind of reflect on this past year and look forward to what our question of the year is going to be. If you've been around Cheney Face Center for a while, you know that we like to go through a question for the year. So that is going to be something to look forward to in our service this morning. But if you want to go ahead and stand and join us, if you're able, as you find your seat, I'll go ahead and open up our time in prayer this morning, and then we can worship the Lord together in song. Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that every day is new, that your mercies are new every single morning. Um, just as the rain is washing things clean outside this morning, I pray that you would just be washing us. Lord, as we're singing even later today from the inside out, Lord, we thank you for the, the newness that you bring with your spirit and how you just continue to change lives. So we come here this morning wherever we're walking in from, just ready for you to move in us. And we know that you are here as we lift your praises together this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
so we thank you, Jesus, and we just declare that we will be people that will praise you forever. We will never stop. There will be no circumstance that will stop us from praising your name. There will be no good thing or no bad thing that can stop us from praising you because you are always faithful. We know that this world will give us trouble, but you never will. Your goodness and your righteousness and your faithfulness will reign supreme in our lives all the time. We give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Could we just give the Lord a clap offering? Just, let's just clap to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. All right, we're going to transition, so I'm going to dismiss our kids to Faith Kids, and the rest of you uh, can say hi to somebody. And if you want, just a quick note, uh, Cooper and Witter in the room. So you'll want to say hi to them. They're off to my right over here. So go say hi to Cooper and Witt. So if you're part of Chini Faith normally, you're probably like, why are we still, why are they still up there playing music? So we're going to call you back with uh, one of, uh, just a part of one of the songs we already sang this morning. So if you want to stand, we'll, we're going to do this we're changing up the order of service a little bit this morning on this December 31st so let's just sing the chorus of this song again he is faithful declare that this morning whatever of this you need whether that's hold on the promise that he's your hope or that he's healing or that he's faithful or joy just take that as we sing
Well, for the rest of our time together this morning, because it's the last day of the year, we felt that we wanted to do something a little bit different with our service time. So we're going to spend the first part of our time, the rest of our time together, kind of reflecting on 2023 and what 2023 was like and what the Lord did and the praise that we can give him for what he did. And then uh, the second half of that is going to be um, 2024, and we'll look forward to 2024. We'll announce our new discipleship question for the year. Right now, our ushers are passing out something for you to help you with our reflection time in a minute. And um, it's really important to reflect on some things, and uh, we wanted to take the time to do that because sometimes you can move into something new so quickly you forget what God did. And what God does in the past and the present always helps us into our future, amen? Because he's always doing something purposeful and for every reason. There's a, Ecclesiastes tells us that there's a reason for everything he does under the sun. And so what he did in 2023 is preparing you for what he wants to do in 2024. And so as we say goodbye to a year, we don't want to say goodbye to the things that Jesus did because we asked a pretty powerful question. In fact, we asked a very important question in 2023. What was our question? What do I believe? Well, that question is huge. It's enormous for our faith because what we believe guides how we live in the present and how we are going to choose to live in the future. And that question, what you believe about Jesus and what you believe about yourself and what you believe about the world and what you believe about God's word and the promises in it, help us make every single small decision in our life daily that happens. And it helps us with gigantic life decisions that we make. So this is not a small question. Here's some of the things that we talked about over this past year that we believe were important for our uh, for ourselves as followers of Christ. We talked about God's word and how important God's word in, is in our life and how we believe that the Bible is God's word and that it guides every decision we make. We talked about how God is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, and how he is our father. These big overarching like 30,000 foot view of who God is, but how that intersects our lives on a daily basis and helps us know him in a very personal and authentic and real way as our, as our daddy, as our Abba Father. We talked about Jesus quite a bit. We spent almost, almost two months actually discussing Jesus when you uh, talk about what we did before Easter and all the way after Easter. We spent about two months talking about Jesus. We talked about him being our savior, our king, our risen Lord, our soon incoming king because he is returning, amen? Aren't you excited about that? I am. <laughs> and it could be any time. We talked about Jesus being our healer, physically, mentally, uh, everything. He heals everything in our lives when we, when we give him everything. We talked about Jesus being our rest and how important it is to just rest in Christ and just let our, ourselves uh, slow down, Right? And then we talked about Jesus being our baptizer in the Holy Spirit. We did something kind of interesting and fun. I don't know if you were here the, that, this Sunday, but we had a dramatic presentation of the book of Ruth. You remember that? How many of you were here for that? That was kind of a highlight. That was very, very cool um, as we got a dramatic presentation of the book of Ruth. And then all summer, I'm glad Cooper is here because Cooper and I preached the book of Ephesians together. Cooper preached it in Shelton and we preached it here. And that's right. Hey, that's great. And, uh, and so we preached through it together and that was really fun. So we studied together. We talked about things and then we, um, and then we preached it together. So that was great. We talked about big things that are really important for us to understand and believe about our faith and that are kind of like those theological foundational things in our life that need to be present as followers of Jesus Christ. We talked about things like our salvation and how that works and how that works itself out in our daily life, but how the entire world needs the salvation of Jesus. We talked about the Trinity. We talked for several weeks and in several different ways about the unity of the church. And then we talked specifically about the church and how it works and how it operates and how we're called to, to be salt and light in our world for Jesus. We talked about living for Jesus, what that means. 
Because in Ephesians, there's two chapters that are really down to earth, nitty gritty, making decisions for Jesus. This is how you really live for Christ. And we talked about that for, for a little bit. And then we talked about spirit-led relationships as well and how the spirit guides our relationships and how the book of Ephesians helps us do that. Right before Christmas, we had a great study in the book of Jonah and we talked about what we believe about obeying God. And um, I hope you're obeying God a little bit better as a result of studying Jonah, amen? Because none of us want to get swallowed by a largemouth bass. We decided that that was really important and that um, we want to make sure that that hap- does not happen in our life, amen? And then we talked about the wonder of Christmas and just how awesome Christmas is and how marvelous it is that Jesus left heaven and came here just to be in relationship with us. And so those are some things that we talked about and that we studied and you probably had your own personal study that you were doing in some things and we had some different studies along the way that we did um, that you could do on your own and different things. And so there was probably a lot that the Holy Spirit was doing in this past year. And so before we move into a new year, we thought it would be really good for us to just remember and contemplate and just sit in the Lord's presence for a little bit and reflect on what God did this past year. Now there is a, an interesting word that you will find scattered all throughout the Old Testament. And it's the word, remember. All throughout the Old Testament, you find this word in almost every generation. The generation after generation of God's people are called to remember what God has done in the past. Why? Why does God tell us all the time to remember how God was faithful in the past? Is it because we're forgetful? Yes, (laughs) partly, yeah. But it's also because we need to remember in the present that God was faithful in the past. And when we remember that God was faithful in the past, and that God took us through a hard financial time in the past, and that God healed us in the past, and that God was there in my darkest moment in the past. And when I was having a great time with Jesus and I was on a mountaintop, Jesus was there with me. And when I was stuck in some sin, the Holy Spirit convicted me and brought me out of it. And when I was just working through some stuff in a relationship, Jesus was there and he took me through it. See, when you look back and you remember, oh, wow, gosh, God really did a whole bunch of cool things this past year in 2023. Then what does it do? Your mind instantly says what? Well, that's who God is. That's who he is. And as I remember who he, who he is and was in 2023, it tells me that's who he is right now today. And that's who he will always be tomorrow. And so remembering is essential That's why in the Old Testament, you see this word all the time, remember. It's also why they were called to to build pillars of rocks all over the country so that you would see this pillar of rock and then you would tell your kids or your grandkids that story that was connected with that pile of rocks. I don't don't know how they did that. They didn't have plaques back then. So, um, but we do it in our country too. I mean, you could travel down the freeways and the highways and you see a historical monument and you pull over and it reminds us of something, right? The people of God just did the same thing in Israel. It just reminded them of the really cool things that God had done in their past. So in your hand, you have a handout to help you reflect on 2023. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take about five to 10 minutes and hopefully you have a pen or there's a pen in the chair in front of you. Or if you need a pen, you can raise your hand and an usher will bring one to you. Um, But let's take about five to 10 minutes and I just want you to spend time with the Lord, just you and the Lord. And I want you to reflect on 2023 with these three fairly good questions, right? Number one, how did I grow in what I believe about Jesus this year? Number two, what did God teach me this year? And number three, in what areas of my life did I become more like Jesus this year, okay? So let's take some time to reflect and remember.
on what the Lord did in your life in 2023. Uh, let me just, hopefully this will help you. Sometimes you listen to somebody else walk through something and it helps you process too. I'll tell you, I'll tell you my reflections, okay? First of all, how did I grow in what I believe about Jesus this year? I just put that Jesus as my foundation and I think I grew in that more and more. Uh, and the understanding that Jesus is just everything and he's leading and guiding, but everything in my life is built on him because he's the foundation. What did God teach me this year? Two things I wrote um, in the whole what I believe thing is just that what I do with my mind is really important. And what I'm thinking about throughout the day is really important and not letting it wander into, um, not just into sinful things, but just like into ridiculous things. Like one of the things that is a challenge for us in a, in a wealthy nation is it a, for, a wealth, wealth affords you to think about a lot of things because you can do a lot of things. And so it opens your mind to totally new concepts and things that your mind might not have ever gone to before if we lived somewhere else. Um, and so learning to let the Holy Spirit just kind of guide our thoughts was good. At the beginning of the year, um, the Lord taught me something that was interesting through a class I took, and that is that I am unique, and so are you. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about this in this next year, because that may become a discipleship tool for us. And then lastly, in what areas of my life did I become more like Jesus this year? Um, I think I'm a little bit more patient. Those of you that are laughing know that you struggle with patience like me. And it may take me till the end of my life to actually be where Jesus wants me to be. Um, but I think I'm a little bit more patient this year than I was last year. And I know that that's a good thing for Kate and for my kids and my grandkids. Um, and so I think that that's really good. And so hopefully you have some really big, important things that you saw in, in your life as well. And just some things that you're working through and continuing to work through. And um, it's good to know that God never, he, he loves us too much to ditch us, right? And so he's always working on things. He's always tweaking things. And that's a good thing. And I'm glad that he's in my life and that he's doing that in me. So that's 2023. So hopefully you have some things that you remember about the Lord in 2023. And that's gonna, it's gonna guide your present. It's gonna guide your future. And we also have some things and about 2024 that I just wanna talk about for a minute. Just begin to cast some vision for this year and talk about our question for the year. As I do, um, I wanna share two verses with you that I think are guiding us as a staff into this next year and that I hope guide you and I into this next year as well. So if you have your Bible or you wanna turn it to Mark chapter eight, you can. Mark chapter eight, um, you know, the best book in the New Testament. Um, in Mark chapter eight, uh, Jesus is just having a moment with his disciples and with the crowd that's there. And um, Jesus says something extremely challenging not just kind of challenging, not just, um, hey, this would be a good suggestion for your life. No, this is a moment where Jesus drops the mic, literally just throws the gauntlet down and says, if you're gonna follow me, this is what it really means. And it's hard, <laughs> like it gets challenging. And Jesus says this in Mark chapter eight, verse 34. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples. And here's what's interesting. It's almost like Jesus has been waiting for this moment and he kind of calls everybody in. And um, Kate and I went to the Eastern basketball game yesterday and it's always interesting how at a, at a timeout, the basketball coach is like, what? Okay, guys, come on, come on, everybody in here. Get close, right? I know the cheerleaders are doing something out there on the court, but come on, come here. I need you to get a little bit closer. This is what Jesus is doing. Come on, everyone. I need you to get a little closer because what I'm about to say will blow your mind. 
What I'm about to say will change your life forever. And what I'm about to say is what it will really mean to be my disciple. And Jesus says this, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Now let's just talk about that for a minute. There's a couple things, there's three in here that you're just gonna love. They're so great, warm and fuzzy, right? The first one, really warm and fuzzy, like just gives you, just gets me warm all over, right? Deny yourself, Mark. Yes, so excited to do that today, right? Deny yourself. Now, is Jesus telling me, Mark, I just, I don't want you to have your own identity anymore? No. What Jesus is actually telling me is, Mark, I want you to find your real identity in Christ. Because I made you. I created you before you were in your mother's womb. I knew you before I created the mountains and the rivers and this planet that you're on. I knew you. And I made you for a purpose and a reason and every single thing in your life is designed by me to glorify me and to help others come to know me. And so what Jesus is saying, and when he's pulling us in, he's saying, hey, I need you to start denying yourself and let more of me in and more of you out. Because as I let more of Jesus in, it's, it's actually interesting. I do actually find more of myself. Because the true me, right, and the true you is who God created. And none of us are the same. We're all very unique. And God created us that way on purpose to glorify him and to further his kingdom. So the first thing is this idea of denying yourself. And, and that means like saying yes to all of Jesus' teachings and God's word. It means saying yes to the Holy Spirit's work in my life in the present daily. And it means saying no to the desires of this world that don't honor Christ. So this deny yourself, it's, it's challenging, but that's the first thing that Jesus says. And then he says, take up your cross. Now that one would just give you warm and fuzzies all over too. Because if I could put it in our language, take up an electric chair. Like just jump in the chair. Sound good? I'm gonna pull the switch, you jump in the chair, it sounds like a great time. And that's what Jesus is saying. And what he means is this, I need, I, I, I need some things in your life to die. That's reality. I need some things in your life to die and I need you to pull the switch on them because I wanna bring, I wanna raise some things to life in you that are gonna be so much better than what you've allowed to grow. And so I need some things to die in you. And, I, and there's also a connotation of like, hey, are you willing to die for Jesus? Like, are you sold out for him so much that if somebody said it's either, you know, you deny Jesus and live or you don't deny Jesus and, and you live, like I'm, I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm not denying Jesus, I'm, I'm living. Um, you can kill me, I don't care, right? I think I completely messed that up, messed that up grammatically, but you understand what I'm saying, right? <laughs> One of my goals for 2024 is to get better grammatically. Um, so deny myself, take up my cross. Now this is very easily understood for somebody in the first century because just about every major city in the Roman empire were doing crucifixions as you went into that town. So this idea um, very well known, very well understood. Take up my cross. Okay, I get that. I, we see that on a weekly basis. Somebody being crucified in our town for something that they did, right? I, I get that. And then the last one, follow me. Follow me. And this one begs that question, right? What am I following? Who am I following? What am I following? What's, what's if I look at the priority list, of my day or my week or my life, what's at the top? Is Jesus number one and I'm following him and everything else under that is gonna be dictated by number one? That's what Jesus meant, follow me. That's the first verse, Mark chapter eight, verse 34, which takes us to John three, verse 30, okay? John three, verse 30. 
In John chapter three, um, we talked about this a little bit last week. Jesus is, John is declaring Jesus as the Messiah in John chapter one. He has his first miracle, turning the water to wine and clearing the temple. And then John chapter three gets into a little bit about John the Baptist as well and how um, John the Baptist was really this super popular guy, but he's preparing the way for Jesus. And in John chapter three, John the Baptist is really transitioning his disciples and people that have been following him to Jesus. He's pointing them to Christ. And he's really telling them, I, I know that you've been hanging out with me for a while and that's been great and we've been having a good time, but I need you to see someone better than me. And John says something that I think is a good lesson for all of us and almost like one of those verses that helps us center our life and focus it in the right direction. And John says this in, in verse 30. He, talking about Jesus, he must become greater, I must become less. Now let's put this in context for John just for a second. John the Baptist is the latest and greatest thing in Israel. At the time, John the Baptist is the man. Okay, John the Baptist, he is the prophet at the time in a nation that loves prophets. Okay, so let me help, let me help us figure this out. John the Baptist right now would be like the best NFL quarterback. He'd be the most popular movie star. He'd be the hottest singer right now going. He would be the YouTuber with the most likes every single day. That's John the Baptist. He is popular. He has, you know, statistically, if we put it in our day, he'd have billions of people following him. And he says what? Stop following me. I don't want you to follow me anymore. I need you, I need you to follow someone greater than me. And he points everybody to Jesus. And so John's motto in his life becomes this. Jesus must become greater. I must become less. And so we have these two interesting things that help us get to our question for the year, that help us to deny ourselves for Jesus, help us to live purposefully and in a purposeful way so that Jesus is greater than anything else. And we wanted to ask a question this year that was quite challenging. And our question is challenging. And um, in light of this very serious moment that we're having right now with the Holy Spirit, I'd like us to just switch for a second, could we? And have a fun moment? Because right now we want to play your favorite game and mine, the question game. The question game, such a great game. And I'm gonna invite my host up. Kate the Black. <laughs> Hopefully you got that. I didn't. Banna, White, Kate the Black. Okay, never mind. All right. Okay. Here we go. So the question game, your, your favorite game and mine. Uh, it's a game we love to play at the beginning of every year. And lots of money in this game for those contestants that can figure out letters. So this is a very simple game. Uh, all you do is guess the letter. And uh, as you guess the letter, if you get it right, you win a million dollars. And if you don't guess the letter, well, then uh, I don't know what happens, but something bad will happen. So guess the question. So Kate Black, um, you know this question, right? You, it's a good question, right? Don't you think? So some people are gonna have to give us a letter here uh, to figure out what this question is. And then if you, if you really feel like you've got the question, then you can raise your hand and we'll, we'll try to figure it out. So let's just start with somebody throwing out a letter, right? Can you guys see it over there? A. Yeah, A, okay, A. A is a good one. Oh, 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 what, whoa, whoa, okay, okay, there we go. All right, all right, okay, okay. That's an A too, yeah. M, M is our next letter. Do we have an M? 
We do have an M. M. I. Do we have an I? Jesus. Yes. What? Yes. Yell it out. <laughs> Am I all in for Jesus? What a good question. So this is our question for next year. Am I all in for Jesus? Now, I'm going to tell you, um, this question is dangerous. It is. It's a dangerous question. And it's very challenging. Because am I all in for Jesus means a lot. And we're going to talk about a lot. And we're going to talk about very, very deep core things in our life and is Jesus in everything yes I got a little emotional sitting here on the front row because I know this is going to cost us yeah and so we don't enter into this lightly we enter into this with a full heart, just like the scriptures that Mark was, was sharing with us. We're gonna have lots of opportunities for us to become less and Jesus to become greater in our life. We're gonna have a lot of opportunities to um, take up our cross, deny ourselves and to follow Jesus. And so as a pastor, as pastors, we don't enter into this lightly because we know what this is going to cost all of us to go deeper with Jesus. But we also know that there's no better place for us to be, Amen. which is following him with our whole heart, our whole mind, our soul, everything that we have. And so we're all going to have a lot of opportunities to grow in this new year. So are you with us? That's the, the real question here. Are you with us? <laughs> okay. Okay, good. We'll be in this together. That's good. It's going to be a good question and a good year. Um, We wanted to tell you about uh, uh, some ways that we're going to do things. Some of them are normal. Some of them are normal rhythms of life of our church. And some of them are going to be things that we will do throughout the year to um, just continue that discipleship and keep this going in in our hearts and our lives. Am I all in for Jesus? So the first thing is our year long Bible reading plan that Kate's gonna talk about. Yeah. So one of the things that we like to do as a church, where are you going? Oh, okay. One of the things we like to do, don't leave me up here by myself, (laughs) that we like to do as a church is we like to provide resources for us to um, read God's word together. And that's something that has become a pretty big and important rhythm of our church. So we are doing something very different this year. Because when we knew that our question was, am I all in for Jesus? And then we saw that our friends at Bible Project are doing a year-long Bible reading plan and they are going through Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. It's three chapters, a whole year on uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And so we're gonna invite you to join us with that. There's a couple different ways um, that you can access this information. So I'm gonna tell you that first. First of all, you can go to their website, bibleproject.com and right on the very front you can it's right there it's very difficult to miss um, you can sign up to get weekly emails that come out on Monday of every week or if you are of the generation that likes the apps you can also um, get the Bible Project app and follow along that way now let me tell you what's gonna happen with this so every Monday you'll get um, an email or on the app um, information and there's I think there's five different things um, each week. It's going to take a total of 30 to 40 minutes to go through all of this. So, for example, this first week, starting tomorrow, the, the portion of scripture for, to start out is Matthew 5, 1 through 16. 
So you're going to be able to read that, certainly. But then there will also be videos and podcast clips and other articles because we are doing a really deep dive into the Sermon on the Mount. And if we are going to be all in for Jesus, we want to know what that means, right? And so going through the Sermon on the Mount together is going to be a great way to do that. And if you need, especially anyone that's, you know, my age or older, if you need any help accessing this information, I'm going to be in the commons afterwards. I'd be really happy to help you find that, okay? All right, so that's our first opportunity. So that's going to be year long. The other thing we like about it is because it's going to take 30 to 40 minutes a week, you may want to do all of that on a Monday, or you might want to divide it up into five to seven minutes per day or whatever, but that also allows us as we go through the year, if we want to do another Bible reading plan, or we're going through a book of the Bible and we want to read that or women's ministry men's ministry wants to to add some things that also allows us room to do that as well so that's our first way that that we get to grow this year what's that's next Mark? next is um something that we, is a regular routine of the life of our church but is a great way to start and discover am i all in for jesus and that is with um our 21 days of prayer and fasting and so starting January 8th, we will begin our 21 days of prayer and fasting, and that will take us through January 28th. So for that first month, we get to discover, am I all in for Jesus? Now, one of the things we talked about that phrase, right, deny yourself. Well, fasting is part of that, right? It's saying no to something so that I can say yes to Jesus, right? I say no to something I enjoy or that is a distraction or that just kind of sometimes pulls me away from the Lord. I, I say no to that to say yes to more of, of Christ. And so um, I want to encourage you to think about this, that this week. And as we launch into that next Sunday, we will talk about the ways that we can pray and fast all throughout the month. And that will be a really great start to help us discover, am I all in for Jesus? I have a funny story to share about that. So this past year when we did our 21 days of prayer and fasting as a family on our Sunday night family dinner, we sat down and talked about what are we each giving up? What are we having as our prayer focus? What is God calling us to? And our son-in-law that I like to call sunshine because he is a sunshine. <laughs> sunshine said that he wanted to fast from coffee. Now, mind you, this kid drank about 12 cups of coffee a day. So he wanted to fast from coffee and he was praying about if God wanted him to stay at his current job or start looking for a new job. So the, the elders amongst us, my dad and Mark's mom, they're like, you can't fast yeah. from coffee. You, you <laughs> drink 12 cups a day. And he, You're he's new to all this. like crazy. You he, can't do that. He's new to all this. And he said, isn't fasting supposed to be a sacrifice? <laughs> to which they shut their mouths and said, yes, we, we're, we we're cheer you, you yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, go for it, yeah. So anyhow, <laughs> so we're gonna ask the Lord to show us, and that's what God showed him, what we're gonna give up and what he wants our prayer focus to be. It can be so many different things the Holy Spirit will show you, so just ask him. Okay, the next thing that I have for us, it goes along with our 21 days of prayer and fasting. We are doing a book study, and it's on the book called Living Like Monks and Praying Like Fools. And what we decided to do is we're opening this up to the whole church. So it's going to be on Wednesday night, five Wednesdays, starting on January 17th. We're going to meet right here in the commons, most likely, unless we have a large crowd, then we'll be in here. But we're going to have a meal together. We'll have child care. And then we'll, we'll launch into this book. And Kyla is going to facilitate this for us. She's read the book and is happy to facilitate that. So we're super excited about that. Books will be available for 10 bucks you can either get one on your own or if you want to share with your spouse or anyone else in your family you can do that as well but we're super excited to have an opportunity to grow in prayer but also to grow in community together as a church family because this will be a great opportunity especially if you're new or you're feeling like I'm not as connected as I want to be at Cheney Faith this is your perfect opportunity to do that so that starts on January 17th Oh, I have one more. Okay, for the ladies in the house, I want to invite you. We are starting in February, our third year of Flourish Mentoring. And Flourish Mentoring is a really awesome, am I all in for Jesus, opportunity. We pair you up with a woman who's in a different stage of her faith, maybe 
ahead or behind where you're at. And then every week you have scripture to read. You get together with your mentor or mentee once a week, and you learn a lot of great things about prayer, God's word, identity, relationships, gratitude, and there's one more. I can't remember what it is, but it's all really, really good stuff. And again, this is a really awesome way to get connected to grow for sure in Jesus, but also to get connected with another sister in Christ. And there's other people, other, you know, mentors and mentees, and we meet every seven to nine weeks. And so you get connected in that way too. Camille is one of our mentees and she loves it. Don't you, Camille? (laughs) I'm putting her on the spot. She didn't love that. (laughs) No, I'm so sorry, Camille. (laughs) But her her mentor is Kim Jaquish. And how can you not love having a mentor like Kim Jaquish, right? So anyhow, we're going to have a, um, informational meeting even if you have just the tiniest little spark of interest in that I encourage you to come to our information meeting which will be on January 10th Wednesday night from 7 to 8 there's been about two dozen women who have gone through flourish mentoring and I believe that every one of them would say that it was a good and positive experience and so I invite you if that sparks your interest to pray about it and see what the Lord would have you do about that All right, and for the men, we will continue our Thursday morning Bible studies. Those will go all through the um, winter and spring, and man camp coming up in April. Lots of great stuff for men as well. Uh, Another thing that we're bringing back in 2024, which will be great, is our quarterly worship nights. Um, A night where we can just come together and have an extended time of worship Uh, a time of prayer. If you need some extended time of praying for something in your life, praying for physical healing, using our spiritual gifts, this is a great opportunity for us to do that as a church and to believe by faith for some deep things for Jesus and a good reminder of just that. Our first one will be, I believe, on March 3rd. So you can put that on your calendar and join us on that evening. It's a great opportunity to just, hey, little reflections throughout the year, four of them. Am I all in for Jesus? And just come. I like to think of those nights as like marinating a steak, right? Sometimes the steak needs time in the marinade. And how often do we just say, hey, I'm going to give time to the Lord. No agenda, no schedule. I'm just going to show up and give the Holy Spirit time to do whatever he wants in this moment with me right now. That's what these nights are for. And they're really important in our faith, okay? So that's uh, coming up. Uh, Then we have lots of Bible studies throughout the year for men, for women. We have lots of things that are coming up and that will be coming up. You'll hear about those things all throughout the year, all different opportunities for you to decide, am I all in for Jesus and to jump into something wherever you would like. Uh, One of those um, things is a little bit longer for the entire year, so we wanted to announce it now because it's coming up and will be a long kind of Bible study, and that's with Jordan and Crystal Bondo. They're gonna teach two classes. Jordan's gonna teach a class, Crystal's gonna teach a class, and they really are MILN for Jesus. In particular, about your sexuality. What am I doing? with my sexuality, what am I doing with sex? What am I doing with uh, my righteousness in regards to to the Lord and my sex? And how am I doing in that? And so there are two things that they're they're gonna be talking about. One uh, for men is called the talking points for seven pillars. Um, And the seven pillars class talks about just the struggles of unwanted sexual behavior. It takes a deep dive um, into our identity, our identity and addressing just the factors that sometimes um, come up and, and make us broken people. And we want to be healthy people, amen? And we want to say, I'm all in for Jesus. We also develop the tools that are needed to break free and have healthy relationships and heal your own self and take back your life. So that's a great one. Crystal's gonna teach a class called Betrayal and Beyond. This one is for those that have experienced trauma during um, sexual betrayal. Helps you gain understanding of how to work through that trauma and how it's impacted your life. It'll help you identify and recognize the symptoms of trauma. How many of you have been through something traumatic and then you couldn't identify the symptoms of it later? I have, right? I think I still am sometimes and I'm 50. Um, You'll be able to apply strategies to keep yourself safe and emotionally healthy and then reestablish trust and emotional health in your relationships. Now, both of these classes will run for 28 weeks. 
So this is really a deep dive. So if you wanna do this, you can go onto our website and on the sign up section of our website where you can go to registrations, actually the title is registrations. If you go to registrations, you can go to that um, link and that connect and it will take you to the sign up for one of those classes. And those will be a really deep dive and something really good. So if you're dealing with any of those um, unwanted sexual behavior issues, I really highly encourage you to jump into one of these classes. They're highly confidential. Uh, they're not something that gets shared out of the room, but you will come out of this 28 weeks later and you will be a different person, completely different person because Jesus will heal you. And it, that'll be awesome. Great opportunity for you to say, am I all in for Jesus? So lots of great stuff coming up in this next year that we can jump into. And I'm just so grateful that as a church, we address these, these areas mm -hmm. because this is the place to address brokenness. That's why Jesus came is because of brokenness. And so I'm so grateful, even though it's a little awkward to hear you say the word sex so many times up on the platform, but, <laughs> but I'm just so grateful that we were going there because yeah. this is, this is what we need. And so I'm really just wanted to say I'm grateful for that. Yeah, me too. Cause sex is fun <laughs> and godly and all those things, right? Amen. All right. I just wanted to say it again to make her blush. So, all right, so um, we wanted to end this year um, by taking communion together and just launch us into the next year because everything's about Jesus, amen? amen? And one of the things that we do that reminds us that everything in our life about Jesus is communion because Jesus did everything for us, everything. And so... We're gonna celebrate in just a minute um, communion together and I wanna close with that, but I'd like to close with a little just conversation about that because as I was contemplating just what we did at Christmas and we celebrated Jesus coming, right? And then at Easter, we celebrate the cross and the resurrection. But every single time we take communion, every single time we take communion, we celebrate Christmas and Easter. You realize that? You realize that as the people of God, every single time we take communion, we are celebrating afresh Christmas and Easter. That's why it's so great to be a Christian. I mean, that's one of the things that's just so awesome about knowing Christ, that every day is like Christmas and Easter because of what Jesus has done in us. And so, as we launch ourselves into a new year and we ask this question, am I all in for Jesus? The first thing we're gonna, we're gonna do is remind ourselves that Jesus was all in for us. Every bit of him. He was all in for you. He wanted a relationship with you so bad. He was willing to die for you. And so right now, Jesus says, I'm all in for you. This next year, you can count on me for everything. Your business, your marriage, your parenting, your grandparenting, everything that's coming in 2024, you can count on me. I'm here for you. I'm all in for you. As I was thinking about connecting what we just did with Advent to this next year, I, I, just in my own personal devotions, I asked myself four questions. And then we turned it into a letter that we sent out to our family and friends and have been talking about it as a family and even talked about it at Christmas time when we just had a moment with our family of reflection upon Christ, which is something we do on every Christmas. And so I asked these four questions and I just want to pose them to you right now. And they deal with the four things that we discuss at Christmas. Hope, love, joy, and peace. And these are the four questions that I'm contemplating as I move into a new year and I'm gonna suggest them to you. Number one, what do you hope the Holy Spirit will do in 
or through you in 2024. There should be hope that arises in every single one of us when we think about what God might do in us and through us in this next year. There's some hope that arises in me as a church. Like there's some empty seats in here. One of my hopes is that this a seat near you will have your neighbor sitting next to you or a friend or a family member. That's a hope. Number two, this one's hard. Who is God calling to you, you to love in this new year? Now, most likely, I didn't mean love someone that you already love and is easy to love. That's not what I meant, right? Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna love Kate more. It's not hard to love Kate. It's not the point. The point is, I think God wants me to is calling me and calling you to love someone that might be hard to love in this next year. But he's gonna call you to raise your love. Number three, what is an area of service that brings you joy that you can focus on in 2024? There's something that brings you joy. Guess who put that in you? God did. God put that in you. He made you that way. And if there's something that you kind of get a little bit heated up about in our city or our state or our world, that's probably a place that God wants you to serve. Say, man, I just get fired up about God's word. Well, probably God might want you to lead a Bible study. I just get fired up about people that are, are homeless and need food. Okay. Dwayne could gladly love to have you serve down at the cupboard and serve people on Wednesdays with food, right? Whatever it is, I want to encourage you to find joy as you focus on that place that God wants you to serve. And then number four, what anxiety can you give to Jesus in 2024 to live in his perfect peace that guards your heart and mind? Christ Jesus. The opposite of peace, Philippians 4 says, is anxiety. It's those things that drag us down, right? So those are the moments where we have an opportunity to say, you know what? I'm giving that to Jesus. I'm not going to hold on to that. I'm not going to focus on it. I'm going to give it to Jesus. And I'm going to live in his peace not an anxiety. I'm not suggesting that your problem will go away. I'm suggesting that the peace of Christ will grow in you in the middle of your problem. And what often happens is the peace of God gets so powerful in your life that the problem's still there, but you didn't even notice it as much. Because God's peace has overtaken your thoughts and your attitude and your anxiousness, even in the middle of trying times. That's number four. So Karen's going to lead us through this song. And as we do, the questions will be on the screen. You can contemplate through them. Our ushers will be passing out our communion. And then we'll take it together. questions up on the screen so people can reflect on that. You can reflect on your own and just listen to these lyrics as we sing. Everything changed It's getting harder to recognize The person I was Before I encountered Christ I don't walk like I used to I don't talk like I used to I've been washed from the inside I've been washed from the inside out
nothing's more real than this In the presence of God Oh, what my heart experienced When my shame hit the wayside And my sin met the Most High I was washed from the inside I was washed from the inside out Because the body of Jesus hung on the cross for you and for me, for the world, allows the forgiveness, the grace, and the mercy of God to flow upon our planet. That's what this bread represents. It represents the unity that we have with one another, the relationships that we build that remind us that we're all in for Jesus that these relationships in this room, in our church, are extremely important. And the juice reminds us of his blood. The atonement for our sin is the blood of Jesus. His life for our life. And then to seal it, he rose from the dead. To not only remind us that his life is for our life, but to also remind us that now eternal life is our life. Not just good life here on the planet, but eternal life because he's risen. He's not dead. He is the only one who can take us into eternity. No one else can. No one else has beaten death, only Jesus. These two things remind us, Jesus, is all in for us and gives us an opportunity to say back to him, I'm all in for you. Would you pray with me? 
Jesus, we give you thanks and praise this morning. Thank you that you left heaven and you came here and you died on the cross to set us free. Our freedom is a result of your sacrifice. And we wanna give you thanks for that. We take this bread and this juice in remembrance of you. Because remembering you helps us get our present right and helps us get our future correct. Thank you for what you've done, Jesus. And would you help us in this next year as we desire to honor you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray, we all said, amen. Partake of the body. stand with us. <clears throat> Mark and I would like to just in a very raw acapella way sing the blessing song over you because we know that when we head into a new year we, we just need Jesus. We're all gonna experience some good things in the new year. There's gonna be a lot of just humdrum, boring, normal things in the new year. But there's also gonna be some hard things that we experience. And just even looking across the room, Mark and I know many of your stories, know the things that are struggles in your life. And we also know that Jesus supersedes all of that, that Jesus is Lord over all. And so we just would like to we're not singers, but we're, we want to bless you in this way, okay? Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Lord, we give you our lives in this next year. We pray that your blessing and your peace would rest upon us. And the grace, the hope, the love, the joy, and the peace of Christ would reign supreme in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Always remember, Jesus loves you very much. So do Kate and I. Have a great week. <laughs>